everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If this is your first time tuning into my channel, welcome. I hope that you will like what you see and subscribe below for more. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a preview of our upcoming sew along, and we're going to be sewing along to McCall 7922. I absolutely love this pattern. <laughs> It was a must buy for me. I know I say it all the time, but I love twist front dresses, ties, wrap dresses, shirt dresses. I love it all. <laughs> um, but I love view D on this pattern and that's the view that I will be making. So if you're not sure what a preview video is, I like to go a little bit deeper in the details before we start sewing. Um, so you all can know what fabric I'll be using, the size I'll be cutting, the notions that I had to purchase so we'll be able to make the dress, as well as the everyday sewing supplies that we'll be using. I'm also going to open up the instructions of this pattern and go through those as well to make sure there's nothing crazy in there um, that will trip us up while we're sewing. I know sometimes creating that twist can be a little challenging, so I'm hoping the instructions are well written and we won't have any problems following along. So if you're interested in any of those details, let's get started with this preview video. All right, again, we're gonna be sewing McCall 7922 and I'm gonna be following along with view D on this pattern. Feel free to sew whichever view that you want to sew. You can see here that I did purchase this pattern in the size 14 through 22. So let's go ahead and flip on the back to read more details. All right, so first I want to point out that it does say this pattern is easy. It is Mrs. Dresses, fitted twist front dresses, have facing invisible back zipper, back darts, applied front band detail and bodice, and length variations, view B and D, they have a shaped hem. The fabrics that they suggest for this pattern are gingham, poplin, cotton blends, and crepe. So since I'm going to be sewing view D on this pattern, I did purchase my fabric. I purchased 60 inch wide fabric. So I came over here and I went ahead and purchased two yards. The reason why I purchased two yards is because I looked down here at the measurements for the hip line, the finished garment measurements, and it says that it is a 50. My hips right now are 49, so I wanted to go up that extra inch to have um, room. So I purchased two yards of fabric and I based that off of my hip measurement because my hips are the fuller part of my body. You will also need to purchase some fusible interfacing for all views. View A and B, how much you need is listed up here. And for view C and D, you need half a yard of fusible interfacing. The notions that they have listed for all views is one 22 inch invisible zipper and one hook and eye. So now that I've gone over the description, the fabrics that they suggest for this project, the yardage that I purchased to make, as well as the sewing notions. And I also told you that I will be cutting the size um, 20 right here, which gives me a 50 inch hip, but I will have to do some merging because I'm not a 45 and a half for the bust. So I will do some pattern merging to make sure I'm getting a good fit for my bust, um, as well as for my hips. So now I will show you the fabric that I purchased in the sewing notions. So for fabric, I'm going to be using this white linen. Linen was not one of the suggested fabrics, but this is what I want to use, and I do think it will still work well with this dress. This fabric is from the fabric store online, and I will link it in the description box if you are interested. So this is the fabric, again, that I'll be using. I did go ahead and purchase some interfacing, some fusible interfacing. This is lightweight, um, and I got this from my local Joann's. And I also have my 22-inch invisible zipper. I have my white serger thread here, my machine thread. I have my measuring tape here so I can take some measurements to make sure I am cutting the right size. I have a ruler so I can transfer lines for the darts. My seam gauge so I can make sure I'm pressing up my hems accurately. This rotary cutter I use to cut out my patterns. This rotary cutter I'll be using to cut out fabric. Point turner in case I need to poke out any corners. This is the marking tool that I will be using for this project. I have my seam ripper here. You all know this is the best friend. We need this always close by. I have my snippers here to cut off any loose threads, pattern weights, pins, and of course our iron and sewing machine. Okay, now that I've gone over the supplies, let's go ahead and open up the pattern instructions. All right, so our first instruction is to go ahead and fuse all of our pieces that need to be fused with interfacing. And then step two picks up with view A and B. And like I said, I'm gonna be following along with view D. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to the instructions for view D. And they pick up over here on step 14. 
So for view D, the first thing that we need to do is to right size together. We need to fold the left front band along the fold line, stitch the upper end, trim, turn that right side out, press and baste those raw edges together. And then it goes into view C right here for 16. So I'm gonna go to the next page. Okay, so for view D up here at 17, we're gonna pin the left front band to the left lower front section matching symbols based stitch below the large circle. So above the large circle, it is a basting stitch, but below the large circle, it is a regular machine stitch. Step 18, we're gonna put the left upper front section to left lower front section. Pin the front edge between the small circles in squares. Trim and then stitch the side edge, leaving an opening between the squares. So if you take a look at the diagram, you can see it's a little opening right here between those squares. For step 19, we're going to pin the right upper front section to the upper front edge of right lower front section, stitch between the small circle and square, and then trim. At step 20, with right size up, insert the right section through the left front opening as shown. So that's why we had to leave these openings up here so we could put the right piece between the left front. So that's what we would do right here at step 20. At step 21, we're gonna pin the upper fronts together at the center front, base, and then stitch between the large circle and squares. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've said stitch between large circles and squares a lot, so it's gonna be absolutely important that you make sure that you transfer all of your markings on the pattern. Step 22, we're going to pin the right upper front to upper side edge of right lower front, stitch ending at square. Okay, step 23 is for view C, so I'm gonna come down here to 24. We're going to pin the lower fronts together at the center front, stitch leaving opening between large circle. So we would stitch this down right here. At step 25, we're going to press the band seam allowance toward the left side, and then we're gonna press the right front seam allowance toward the right side, turning in opening edge along the seam line. Step 26, it picks back up with view A and B. So we're gonna come on down to step 30 and it begins to work on our back piece. We're gonna stitch our back darts in place, then press them toward the center. And then the following steps right here are for all views. It's step 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36. Those are all of our zipper insertion steps. So I will be sure to walk you all through that. Step 37 and 38 are back with view A and B, so I'm gonna to flip to the back to find D. All right, step 39, it picks back up with view C and D. We're gonna stitch front to back at the shoulder and overarm edges. Step 40 is for view C. Step 41 is for view D. We're gonna stitch the front and back at side and underarm edges, leaving opening below large circle. Stitch underarm curve again along previous stitching, and that's so we will reinforce right here um, in this curve area. So we will stitch and then stitch again right along that previous stitching. Make sure that we are stopping and back stitching at this large circle. All right, step 42 picks up with the facings for A and B. And I'm gonna come on over here to step 48. This is where it picks back up for view C and D. And this is stitching our front and back neck facings together along the shoulder seams. And then you're gonna finish off the outer edge with either a serger or some bias tape, um, or you can just turn in a quarter of an inch to finish off the outer edge of the facing. Then we would pin the facing to the dress, make sure that we pivot down here at this large circle at the center front do some clipping, some trimming, as well as some understitching as far as we can possibly go for our facing. Then at step 50, we will turn everything to the inside, give it a good press, and it says here to slip stitch the end facing over the zipper tape and then tack at the seams. I will stitch mine down and I'll show you how to do that along the zipper tape, um, but I will tack the facing down along the shoulder seam here. We will sew on our hook and eye along the back opening above our zipper. And then for step B and D, we will make a five inch narrow hem on the side opening edges, taper to nothing above the large circle, pivot across a quarter inch seam allowance above the large circle when stitching. So we're going to create a narrow hem right here in our opening edge. We're gonna stitch up, stitch over a quarter of an inch above that opening and then stitch back down. And then we will finish off the lower hem of the dress right here with a narrow hem, as well as do a narrow hem for the front opening 
And then for step 56 on the outside, we're going to stitch left front band along stitching line between small and large circle through all thicknesses. So that would be the last thing that we do and we'll be all done with our dress. All right, everybody, so that is all for the preview video. I really do hope that you all enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you have any questions, let me know below. I'll be more than happy to answer. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you do not miss when this video goes live on Friday. I'll see you all then. Blessings, everyone. Bye.